Nearly a month on from Beirut's deadly explosion, the return of the French president. Blown in, optimists would have you believe, on winds of change for Lebanon. His visit coincides with the country's centenary and the nomination of a little-known new prime minister, now tasked with forming a government people will trust. It's unlikely. Protesters demanding the fall of Lebanon's political elites for months now were back on the streets today. I'm against any government who is not technocrat. Either you shut down the sectarian system or we will stay always like this. Emmanuel Macron's first act on arriving last night was to visit the iconic Lebanese singer Fayrouz. She's one of the few unifying symbols in a country defined by its sectarian fissures, the same ones blamed for the corruption and mismanagement many say led to the Beirut explosion. Today, Macron floated the possibility of sanctions against Lebanon's ruling classes if corruption isn't addressed by all parties. But exceptionalism is already creeping in. This is a rally by the Lebanese president Michel Aoun's free patriotic movement yesterday. God, Lebanon and Aoun only, they're chanting. We learned through the years and through all the exp experiences we passed through to trust him. Distrust is a far more profound emotion in Beirut neighborhoods devastated by the August blast. Ordinary people and volunteers taking care of each other, they say, in the absence of the state. We are taking the place of the government, we are rebuilding the houses, we are giving food boxes, we're doing everything. As well-intentioned as the street, as they call it, may be, the criticism is that it's still a long way off from forming a credible, united and electable opposition capable of breaking through the old sectarian lines. Margaret Evans, CBC News, Beirut.